Transporting blood around the body is essential for life. Blood carries loads of useful things like oxygen and glucose to your cells. So it's little wonder that our bodies have got amazing transport systems in the form of blood vessels. Let's see how they work. A great way to improve your understanding and boost your grades is with my study along workbooks. These are specifically made to use alongside my videos and contain loads of tasks and exam questions. By downloading them, you support me in continuing to make these videos. Get yours now from emmathetici.com. There are three types of blood vessels. You need to know the structure and function of each. The arteries carry blood away from the heart. And I remember this with A for away. They're carrying it to the organs of the body. The blood is under high pressure as it's just being pumped out of the heart. Because of this, the arteries have thick muscular walls with elastic fibers. And this allows the walls to stretch as the blood is forced through them. This is actually what you're feeling when you take your own pulse. Over here, the hole in the middle is called the lumen. Arteries have a relatively small lumen and that keeps the blood under high pressure. The arteries will eventually branch out into capillaries. Capillaries are tiny blood vessels that you can't actually see with the naked eye. Their job is to bring the blood to the cells of the body. Once they've done that, substances can then easily diffuse out of the blood and into the cells. For example, oxygen and glucose may diffuse into the body cells and waste products like carbon dioxide will diffuse out of the body cells. Capillaries have very thin walls and you can see that they're just one cell thick. This short distance makes diffusion much, much easier and therefore faster. The blood will then pass from the capillaries to the veins. They carry the blood from the body's organs back to the heart. At this point, the blood is under lower pressure. This means that veins can have thinner walls as they don't need to maintain a high pressure. They also have a wider lumen to allow the blood to flow easily through it with less resistance. And they've got valves. These allow the blood to flow forward to the heart, but prevent any backflow of blood, which is really important. The specification mentions being able to carry out calculations for blood flow. So let's take this chance to practice some math skills. Each type of blood vessel has a different cross-sectional area of the lumen, which affects the rate of blood flow. A study was done to compare the rate in different vessels. And just to note that all of these numbers and results are just made up for this question. So the blood in the arteries was found to move 600 millimeters in 0.2 seconds, and the blood in the veins was found to move 500 millimeters in 0.4 seconds. Calculate and compare the rate of blood flow in arteries and veins. Okay, so let's do the first one together for arteries. We're trying to work out rate, and rate is just another word for speed. Hopefully from physics and key stage three science, you know that speed is just distance divided by time. Our distance for the arteries is 600 millimeters, and the time it takes to travel that far is 0.2 seconds. When we do that calculation, we get 3000. But what are the units? Well, let's just check what we had. The distance was in millimeters, and the time was given in seconds. It's millimeters divided by seconds, and that division line is just the slash that you have. So it's millimeters slash or per second. Okay, that's for the arteries, so now I pause the video and see if you can work out the rate for the veins. Ready? Okay, well speed is still distance divided by time, and in this case it's 500 divided by 0.4, which gives us 1250 millimeters per second. The question also asked us to compare them, and hopefully you can spot that the arteries have a faster rate of blood flow than the veins. We should do a little bit of extra mass here. You can see just by looking at it that it's more than twice as fast. And if we did 3000 divided by 1250, you'd actually get that it was 2.4 times as fast. That's important to do for a higher mark question. Okay, now it's time for some quick questions. Pause the video and try these questions and then press play when you're ready to mark them. Ready? One, describe the function of the capillaries. To allow diffusion to occur easily, 
between the blood and the cells of the body. 2. Why do arteries not have valves? Well, valves prevent the backflow of blood under low pressure, but the arteries transport the blood under high pressure and therefore don't require valves. 3. In a study, an artery was found to have a flow rate of 3000 mm per second. Calculate the flow rate for the capillaries below and suggest the reason for the difference in flow rate. All right, so we've been given it in millimeters per second. And let's look at what the capillaries are in. We've got 40 centimeters and the time is in seconds. Now centimeters is obviously a different unit to millimeters, so we need to convert it. You can do this at the start or at the end. I prefer the start so I don't forget. So how do we convert to millimeters? Well, it's just times it by 10 to give us 400 millimeters. Then speed is distance divided by time, which is 400 divided by 0 0.5, which gives us 800 millimeters per second. Now let's compare them and suggest the reason for the difference. You can see that the capillaries have a much slower flow rate than the arteries. Let's suggest a reason. It might be to allow more time for diffusion to occur. Okay, how did you do on the questions? Learn about breathing and gas exchange in my next video over here. And if you're enjoying these videos, please don't forget to subscribe. If you do, you'll get loads more GCSE science help. Thanks for watching and bye.